Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now, when I said I was going to go down to Airfix potentially, I was asked by lots of people about the spare parts operation at Airfix. I said I would ask about it. So while I was down at headquarters in Margate, I collared Dale Luckhurst, who's the head of brand for Airfix, about spare parts, how to get them now, and how you might be able to get them in the future. Now, if you enjoy this video and find it useful, Please do remember to let me know by giving it a like, give the old thumbs up down there. And if you haven't done so already, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is click on the small logo down there. And for more concrete support you might offer the channel for future productions, you can do that through Super Thanks down here. Or you can do it through any one of my partner programs, all of which are listed in the information box below. Let's get on and see what Dale had to say for himself about spare parts at Airfix. For our chat we went to the historic mould store. Here the moulds for past kits are kept until they're possibly resurrected for release as vintage classics. Among the old favourites are figure kits of Queen Victoria and Napoleon Bonaparte. You've got to wonder what those two chat about in the wee small hours. Anyway, I made a start by asking Dale what happens if I'm making a kit at home and find I've lost one of the pieces? So you can email spares at airfix.com uh, Alternatively you can go on our website and you'll find all the information on there to contact the team. Um, if you've purchased a kit from us in the last 12 months or so or directly through a, a retailer um, the guys will send that part out to you free of charge. Um, that's what we do. Um, if it's a much older kit, then the guys will, uh, may still ask you for uh, proof of purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, and then depending on the circumstances that that product, that part is missing, they may ask for uh, a small amount of money to um, post that, that product to you. We all know that postage is not getting any cheaper. Yeah, so sure. whilst we might still have the plastic in a box, uh, which poses challenges depending on the age of the kit, uh, the postage is obviously a huge, huge cost to us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, ideally, there's no parts missing from your product. Of course, yeah. So, if um, do, do you have like a, a warehouse somewhere just with like at least one copy of as much as you can, and then someone physically goes in and checks which box, or, or are they like in bins of like th this bin contains a Concord? This, this box is part one, this box is part two, and so on. So it's the, so it's the first. So, um, like racking you see behind me here, there's um, smaller versions of it at our sister site down the road, um, full of um, products, uh, full product, starts off as full product. We normally get um, four, four versions of the product, and they just sit at the, on the shelf until parts are called from them. Um, if the same part is being called through uh, from a kit, uh, that starts to uh, raise alarm bells here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can start to put in additional checks uh, in our manufacturing units to make sure that they're doing everything they can to mitigate that risk of mm -hmm. um, failing parts. Um, the other thing that we do is um, when we make clear parts and decal sheets, we order more and they go straight into our spares department. Um, clear parts are particularly brittle because the plastic that they're uh, moulded from. So we know people sometimes have an issue with those or they're broken in the box to begin with. Um, and then decal sheets, people tend to make mistakes. So, um, um, so that's why we have a, a, a set of extra decals there. Our challenges are, if a product hasn't been made for a number of years, um, and therefore are, um, are the kits on the shelves, those parts have been depleted, um, those clear parts have, have disappeared, uh, but also those decal sheets have gone, that's when we start to face an issue. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to make another batch of kits just to supply some spare parts. Yeah. And we draw a bit of a, uh, it becomes a bit of a stalemate really. Um, unfortunately, um, the, the only thing that can help us there, or the consumer, is if a, another kit is still in the range that uses those same parts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, you know, Gary, that um, we release uh, the you know, year one, we release a new tool, year two, we release the same tool, but we've added parts to get another variant out of it. If you're missing something from year two, for example, but it's actually part of that um, core product in year one, then we can search for that product in year one. Excellent. And do you think there might be a, a future where these are all scanned in a computer and you just send in 
a bit of money and phone up and say, can I have a part 30, 31 wheel from a Concord, please? And someone just prints it out on the machine for you. I love the idea of that. Um, I think we're a number of years away from ever getting to that. Um, I think we would certainly need to consider our own IP and just giving that out. Um, I'm sure someone would, over a number of weeks or months would try and ask for every <laughs> single part included yeah. uh, and build up a, a kit. Um, but I do like that. and It's certainly something to keep an eye on as we move forward with 3D printing. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, 3D printing is a bit like buying a car. Yeah. You've still got to learn how to drive it and you've still got to fill it up. So you know, it's a small part and a very big <laughs> cog. Um, yeah. Or you could 3D print them here and just send out the finished part maybe. That is certainly something that we could consider. Yeah. And that works if we've got the original CAD, of yeah. course. But for yeah. something that is a vintage classic uh, in our range or uh, a product that uh, was introduced during that interim period, um, of Hornby's acquisition of Airfix, we won't have that CAD, of sure. course. So. Um, would you have a feel for the oldest kit that you actually do? The oldest would, kit would be got... able to supply. Oh, for... the oldest. Oh no, I couldn't. I couldn't say. I mean, the best bet is if it's been on our range in the last couple of years, then we should still be able to supply um, spare parts for it. Excellent. Um, but but it is a tricky one, and I know that our spares team um, do a fantastic job in fulfilling requests as soon as they can. <laughs> yeah. But of course, I, it, it took them less than a week to get a wheel from my Concorde back yeah, to me, which yeah. is really impressive. Um, but like any department, they have their really busy times. Mm. So, you know, I know that they will get stretched nearer, uh, nearer Christmas and after Christmas. So, you know, but bear with them. Um, they are great. They just might need to, some extra time. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks very much. So, essentially, look after the bits of kit in your box, first of all. Yep. Don't let the carpet monster eat them. But if it's a recent one, there's a very, very good chance you'll already have one. But if you've got a fairy rotodyne, for example... I'm sure if you give them enough money, they might even just print you one from that, but who knows. So there we go. I hope that's answered your questions. Um, as I told Dale, then I had a wheel missing from my Concorde and it took a week for the thing to arrive. It arrived in like, a box about that big, for a part that big, but you know, at least it was safe, eh? Um, they will do their best. They aren't actually, there's no one specifically employed to run the spares operation. So do bear with them, especially around Christmas or busy periods like that. Um, and just keep making sure you email them or phone them or whatever and they'll do what they can to help you out I'm sure. Now if you've enjoyed the video and I hope you have please do remember to say so by giving it the like up down there by clicking on the thumbs up symbol and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It doesn't cost you anything, it helps me enormously. Just click on that small logo down there in the bottom right corner. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.